All right, guys, so I love it when these so-called academics get challenged on their ridiculous ideology, right? They're ridiculous, woke, everything is racist ideology, okay? Because when logic meets the woke ideology, logic always wins. And logic makes some of these people's brains melt down, right? And a brain meltdown is exactly the way I would describe Ibram X. Kendi's answer to the question of are vaccine mandates racist if by your definition if according to you any type of government policy that disproportionately affects uh black or brown people right the way he would frame it um is racist right and because black people are statistically less likely to receive the COVID 19 vaccine does that make the vaccine mandate racist i want you guys to take a look at how this man brain melts when asked this question take a look the question is like and i think i'm understanding it correctly that like any policy or potential policy that would have a disparate racial impact is a racist policy so if that's correct then would vaccine mandates that disproportionately affect people of color would that be a racist policy so, I, there's two different sort of measures currently. Uh, one measure finds that white Americans are most likely to be resistant to getting the vaccine. And then there's another, there's other data that finds that, that black and Latinx Americans are the least likely to be vaccinated. And so, as a result, it's hard to say. Um, but what I will say is, to me, the actual problem isn't the vaccine mandates. The actual problem is when you actually study those, particularly Black and Latinx people who aren't vaccinated, you actually talk to them, we're finding that uh, a lack of accessibility to the vaccine for a whole host of reasons is actually leading to them having a lower rate, while with white Americans, it's more or less the result of their political ideology. Bruh, talk about mental gymnastics. Talk about mental gymnastics. And that question, guys, I loved it because it really revealed the con artist that people like Ibram X. Kendi is, right? He, he's a con artist because he makes money pushing this idea that literally everything is racist. Any policy that has a negative uh, disproportionate impact on black people or brown people, whoever, is racist, Right? He's made a living. He's made millions pushing this stupid narrative, okay? That's not grounded in reality. But yet, when confronted with a question about a Democrat policy and how this Democrat policy negatively and disproportionately affects black people, is it racist? Is it racist like you've been telling us he comes out here with this garbage, which really exposes him as a fraud, in my opinion, because he can't come out here and say vaccine passports are racist, despite his whole academic career being built off this idea, right? That any policy that negatively and disproportionately affects black people is racist. He can't say that. You know why? Because he'll be framed as a anti-vaxxer, right? He'd be framed as an anti-vaxxer. And if he's framed as an anti-vaxxer, he can't sell books. He can't sell these corporate courses. He's not going to be on TV anymore, right? He's not going to be in with the Democrat establishment anymore. There goes his career. There goes his livelihood if he says that. So he has to do mental gymnastics, right? In which he, he basically cites, uh, there's some studies that say that, well, white people are actually the most vaccine hesitant. Um, I looked into this claim, guys, and at best, at best, I could find that vaccine hesitancy among white and blacks was basically equal. That's at best, Okay. Now, we all know the overall numbers from the Kaiser Foundation in regards to overall population, right? In which you have 60% of white people have received at least one dose compared to white people being 61% of the population. And 10% of black people have received at least one dose of the vaccine compared to uh, being 12% of the total population. Hispanics is 17% have received at least one dose compared to Hispanics being 17% of the population. So, uh... 
again, just looking at the overall population statistics, uh, black people seem to be the most hesitant in terms of who's actually received it. Okay. Now, if you actually want to look at the studies, right, there was a study done that examined the racial and ethnic differences in the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy among healthcare workers in two large academic hospitals. This study found that compared to white healthcare workers, hesitancy was highest among black and Hispanic or Latino healthcare workers, followed by healthcare workers of other or mixed race, ethnicity, and Asian healthcare workers. In the logistic regression models, black healthcare workers had the greatest odds, greatest increase in odds of vaccine hesitancy compared to white healthcare workers, followed by Hispanic or Latino healthcare workers. This increase in odds remained high across regression models after adjusting for demographic variables, employment characteristics, and COVID-19 exposure risk, and decreased among black healthcare workers when adjusting for status regarding being up to date with routine vaccinations. Okay. This and guys, keep in mind, this is just me giving the facts, right? This is not me saying anything about vaccine hesitancy or any claims about the vaccine, none of that, right? I'm simply just giving the facts. I'm rebuting what this man is saying because he's pushing garbage, right? That is not grounded in anything. He's just making stuff up, right? There was another study uh, that examined the COVID-19 vaccine acceptance and beliefs among black and Hispanic Americans in which that study concluded that black and Hispanic individuals are more hesitant than U.S. whites to receive the COVID-19 vaccine when asked how long they wanted to wait before receiving the COVID-19 vaccine after the vaccine became broadly available. Blacks and Hispanics were significantly more likely than whites to indicate that they wanted to wait for over a year and were significantly less likely than whites to indicate that they wanted to get vaccinated immediately. Blacks and Hispanics were also less likely than whites to report that they would encourage their family members to get vaccinated. So again, I haven't found any studies to suggest anything that Ibram Hex Kennedy is talking about in terms of white people being more vaccine hesitant than black people. Haven't found it. Again, at best, I found like some random survey that suggests that um, it's almost equal. Okay. So again, what he's saying is not grounded in reality. But see, the problem is, is what the mainstream liberal media is trying to do. And this guy right here is basically a Democrat operative. He's trying to do that as well. Is that well, he's trying to frame the issue as well. Uh, conservative equals white, right? Because there is vaccine hesitancy among people that may be um, more conservative or Republican because of, you know, political beliefs and stuff like that. Well, that, that equals white, right? That means white people are more vaccine hesitant. Black people are not. It, it's white people, right? Because they're trying to equate conservative or Republican equals white. That's what this man is doing. And then he goes on to make a more ridiculous claim to say, well, black people don't have access to the to the vaccine. There's a access problem. When the Biden administration literally made it a priority to try to get access to this vaccine for people that, that have been the victims of systemic racism and that disproportionately have lacked access to this type of stuff in the past. The Biden administration has made it a priority to do that. I mean, the vaccine is essentially available almost everywhere you go, right? CVS, everybody has a CVS, okay? I mean, CVS are located almost everywhere. And that's not to say that everybody has equal access to a pharmacy in regards to distance to a pharmacy because, you know, there are studies out there that suggest that black and brown neighborhoods are more likely to be pharmacy deserts right so that there's studies out there that suggest that you know within a certain mile radius uh you know black and brown people are less likely to have a pharmacy but that does not mean that that's necessarily a a significant contributing factor to uh black people not being vaccinated because as you can see hispanics make up 17 percent of the population and 17 percent of the people who have received at least one dose of the vaccine so again this disparity is not really showing up as much with hispanics it's not really affecting them that much in regards to their ability to get the vaccine so again why is it really affecting black people because again only 10 percent of those who have received at least one dose of the vaccine are black while black people are 12 percent of the population and they both allegedly disproportionately lack access to uh pharmacies according to ibram x kendi right according to him so what is it, it, it do hispanics have more access than blacks now because he didn't articulate that. Something has to explain the, the reason why Hispanics are getting the vaccine at a proportionate level to their population and black people aren't. 
What's the explanation? He doesn't have one. So what Kendi is saying here, again, it's just this, the facts just don't add up. The facts just don't support what he's saying. And if he does have a problem with black people getting access to the vaccine, he needs to blame the Biden administration. He needs to blame his Lord and Savior, Biden, and the Democrat Party. Because this statement right here from him shows that he's nothing but a Democrat operative. Because when it came to test your actual principles, the things that you've made millions of dollars on, okay, pushing this woke nonsense in school, telling everybody that everything is racist, that all white people are racist, that white kids are racist. When it came to actually test your ideology and your principles, you fold when it comes to trying to cape for Democrat policies that if consistent, you would say, well, by my own definition, yeah, that's racist. Now, I, I, I want to be clear here. Do I believe that any policy that disproportionately negatively affects a certain group of people, black, brown, white, or whatever, is that inherently racist? No, I don't believe that. Now, sometimes I'll say that as a way to basically try to point out liberal hypocrisy when it comes to certain things, right? So, yeah, sometimes I'll use that argument as a way to say, well, you guys, the left, don't y'all say that this is uh racist because it disproportionately negatively affects black people don't y'all say this is racist that's how i'll frame it but that doesn't mean that i believe that any policy is inherently racist just because it negatively or disproportionately impacts a certain group of people no in order to determine whether or not a policy is racist you have to look at the intent that the policy makers who crafted the policy that they intend to negatively and disproportionately if affect a certain group of people that is hard to prove right that's hard to prove otherwise i like to stick with the explanation of well you know a policy see may negatively or disproportionately affect a certain group of people because certain group of people right whether that's race culture whatever they just have different behavior characteristics okay and those behaviors are what it explains the disproportionate and negative impact compared to other groups of people right i recognize that People are inherently different based off their culture and sometimes to a certain extent based off their race when it comes to their behavior pattern, right? Now, can you target people by race by going after their behavior patterns that are associated with a certain race? Yes, sure. Obviously, you can craft policy in a way like that, right? But I'm not making an overarching statement like Ember X. Kendi when it comes to determining whether or not a policy is racist purely just based off whether or not it disproportionately and negatively impacts a certain group of people, right? There's a difference, right? I, I would take a more nuanced and uh, conservative perspective on this issue and say, well, you know what? We got to look at the intent. We got to look at what they're actually trying to do. We, you know, we got to look at a multitude of factors before we can determine something like that. But this guy, he, he doesn't want to go through that. He just makes an overarching statement and here's the thing, he doesn't even try to dispute whether or not that's his actual position because he can't because he knows that he's made a career and a living off of this idea that literally everything is racist. Any policy that negatively or disproportionately affects black or brown people is racist. So he can't even dispute that. He can't dispute that. That could have been his way out of this question, right? That would have been the finesse if he was going to finesse. But he couldn't do that because his whole career is built off that. His whole career is based, is based off calling everything racist. And he really can't say that vaccine mandates are racist because what will happen is, is that he'll be framed as an anti-vaxxer, right? And if he's a, if framed as an anti-vaxxer, there goes his corporate sponsorships. There goes his ability to sell these woke courses. There goes his ability to sell books. You see what's going on here? And I just love the fact that he was challenged with this question because it really exposes his ideology as fraudulent, that he's a fraudulent person. He doesn't really believe the things he's saying. He's just making money, right? He's out here selling these courses, selling this ideology to schools and corporate America as a way to enrich himself. But when push comes to shove, when these principles are put up against these Democrat policies, right, all of a sudden, I don't know. I don't know if that's racist. Crazy how that nuance doesn't apply to anything else, but it applies to this. Kind of crazy. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.